What is going to be today? We are back with another 2 in 1 WWE Elite figure review on the WWE Elite Series 112 Becky Lynch and Bray Wyatt figures. Now, I was very much anticipating this Bray Wyatt. This figure has had a, an illustrious lore. It's been kind of crazy with the cancellations and the delays of this figure, of course, with the passing of Bray Wyatt. Rest in peace to Bray Wyatt. Truly miss him. What an unbelievable talent and just such a sad day whenever you see somebody pass away, obviously, especially at, you know, a very young age and everything like that, man. A very terrible situation. But today he is back in the WWE Elite line, and I'm very excited for it. It could possibly be the best Bray Wyatt Elite figure of all time, which we're going to get into. And, you know, this figure originally was going to come in that Epic Moments Ultimate Deletion set with Matt Hardy and everything. It had the red pants. That set was unfortunately canceled. And then when we learned about the Greatest Hits line, and we saw this figure on display, it's a repaint of that figure. But then again, with the tragic passing of Bray Wyatt, they did delay the figure for obvious reasons. But now it is finally coming out. They put it back in the line in Elite Series 112. So it's been moving, it's been moving, but it's finally here and I'm excited for it. And then we have Becky Lynch over here, which I don't know how I feel quite yet. We'll have to dive into everything. But if you guys want to grab these figures, you can do so over at Ringside Collectibles. Huge shout out to them for making this review possible. Use code MD Toys to save yourselves 10%, but we do have Bray, we do have Becky. It should be a fun review. Here we have Becky Lynch. I don't believe this is Rogue-inspired gear, but it looks like Rogue. You know, it, it reminds me of Rogue. Every time I see this, I think of Rogue. And I kind of low-key think of TMNT a little bit. I think of April a little bit. Not completely, but I think of Rogue, first of all. We have a nice shot of Becky there. Nice shot of the figure here in the front view window. Still not, uh, don't really care for this packaging. On the side, you get a shot of Becky Lynch, and then on the back, you do have a nice image of Becky Lynch there. This is from Money in the Bank last year. Rest of the figures in the wave. And then we do have the Brayeth Wyatt figure here looking pretty good. Kind of an Elite 54 repaint. You have the nice shot of the man there, Bray Wyatt on the side, Bray Wyatt again. On the back, you get a nice shot of Bray Wyatt. And I think it, this is supposed to be from the Ultimate Deletion, but I thought he wore red pants, not khaki pants, or this, you know, this yellowish, whatever color, but nonetheless, man, let's crack these figures out of the packaging, put them on the rotating base, and find out what the hell these two are all about. So here we have Becky Lynch and Bray Wyatt out of the packaging going round and round as of course they do here in the reviews. But I am liking these figures quite a bit so far. You know, we're going to get into all the details, of course, break down what they come with and see what I like, what I don't like. But I don't know, man, I kind of, I don't know, I'll get into this as we progress throughout the review, but I'm kind of worried about certain things and we'll discuss that and I'll, I'll describe everything that I'm thinking as we progress through the review. Just, just hold on to that thought, we'll get into it in just a moment. But at first glance, I like the aesthetics of the figures, I like the way they're looking here in the review. We'll have have to see how it all pans out, of course. But with that being said, let's dive into Becky Lynch's accessories and Becky Lynch's figure, and then we'll run it back and take a closer look at the Eater of Worlds accessories and the Bray Wyatt action figure itself. So getting into Becky Lynch's accessories, this is what I'm talking about, man. I feel like the line may be lacking in accessories. We know how much they're putting into this line. We know how good some of the quality accessories are, like the cloth goods and stuff. But in terms of both of these figures, I feel like they're lacking in the accessories department. We aren't getting a whole lot here. We are getting a ladder that we have seen multiple times over. They've had this ladder mold for years upon years, man. I mean, this is a ladder mold that we have seen so long. And it continues here. It's like this flat silver color. It is nice. It could stand up and everything. I'm not going to get it completely on camera there, but it's probably the height of maybe, I don't, I don't know, it's it's pretty good height there though, but it is, in, in retrospect, it's kind of a short ladder, it's not the biggest ladder ever, but it has some details going on with it, but it's nothing we haven't seen before. We've seen this ladder multiple times over, and it's, you know, it's okay, it's it's not the best accessory, but she this is from Money in the Bank, so I get, you know, including her with the ladder. And then for interchangeable hands, she does come with the gripping hands, or the weapon wielding, or mic wielding, or whatever the hell you want to say. No fingernail polish, but I think she had like light blue or gray nail polish polish on, which isn't the biggest deal, but it's certainly a detail that's missed here. And then she is the man, so you know she's going to come with fists to beat the hell out of people, so you get the interchangeable fists. But nothing new going on with these accessories from Becky Lynch. So starting out with the Becky Lynch figure, starting out the head sculpt, man, I just don't really like this head sculpt. It's just not like, I don't know, there's something about it that just doesn't have likeness to Becky Lynch. I see it at certain angles, and it reminds me of the Elite 111 Trish, where at certain angles I see Becky Lynch, and then you look at it in another way, and it doesn't look like Becky Lynch. I just feel like this it looks like a you know, if they made a Bratz version or some sort of doll version of Becky Lynch and shrunk it down, this is what I imagine it would look like. It would kind of have a little likeness, but it really wouldn't look all that like her. It would just kind of be a general look of Becky Lynch. But one thing I don't like about the figure is this hair. You see how it's supposed to be like stacked layers of different color orange or whatever? And I know she did have the highlight right there, but I don't think the highlight is executed that well. I'm, I'm just not a big fan of this. And, you know, they got into this point where they don't really put the eye makeup or the lipstick on the figures and she doesn't have 
like any makeup or blush on, which I guess probably would be difficult to execute with, you know, different deco and stuff like that, but it is lacking a little bit there, which isn't the biggest deal, but I don't know. I just don't really care for the expression and the head sculpt here. I think that she's had better head sculpts, and we'll, we'll experiment with it. We'll see what could look better and all those things, but I do like the gear of the figure, which has these yellow, black, and green panels, and again, I can't remember what the inspiration was. I want to say it was some sort of comic book or hero of some kind, but it, it reminds me of Rogue, like I said, but I don't think it was supposed to be Rogue, but she does have the zipper down the middle. I really wish they would have given us the Kill Bill attire. That's the that's really the figure and attire I want, but you have the cuffs there, nice paneling going on. A lot of the same sculpt we've seen from Becky Lynch. Nothing, you know, too crazy or anything. You have the green and yellow. Then she does have her legs here, which are highly articulated. No knee pads, so that's good. You are getting, like, the fishnet sort of dark paneling. No cross hatching or anything, but green and yellow looks good, and then she does have these god-awful basic boots, which I despise, but at least, you know, we are seeing these get retired, you know, but the feet look good and everything. It's just these basic boots are trash, but her figure is very articulated, you know, like double jointed knee is fantastic. She can kick forward really well. It's the boot rotation. She has no ankle pivot because they're basic boots, which is unfortunate, but she can go above 90 here, full rotation, bicep swivel, double jointed arms. You know, the diaphragm's not going to be the greatest, but God, this lady needs a new ultimate because her first ultimate was good, but it looked nothing damn like her and it just was awful. But yeah, let's get into some Becky Lynch figure comparisons so you can see what we're, we, we got going on here with this Becky. So for your Becky Lynch figure comparisons, we do have a few different Beckys. We have the Ultimate Edition with a head swap and some different surgery going on with this figure. I think I leg swapped it with the Lee 72 Becky. Did a boot. So I did some different things with this Ultimate Edition, which I still like, by the way. It's just the head sculpts were awful. You have the 60th Anniversary Then Now Forever Together 4-pack Target Exclusive Elite Becky Lynch, which I was not a fan of. Everybody loved this figure. I think it's overrated. I'm not a big fan of it. It's kind of like Lady Gaga Becky Lynch. You have the Elite 112, and then you have the Elite 100 with a head swap. And I remember this head sculpt had like really big anime looking eyes, and it just took me out. It didn't look that good. I like both gears they have going here. I like that they're giving us these cool gears. It's just the head sculpts are lacking. Because I prefer the ponytail pushback hair here and the Elite 72 head sculpt and a couple other head sculpts rather than these new ones that we've been getting. And this one's not bad. It's just a very unique look for Becky Lynch, I guess. But I don't know, man. It's just, she has some cool figures. I just think that the head sculpts have been lacking, especially on the last few releases. And then for another Becky Lynch comparison, we do have the Elite 109 Seth Rollins up next to the Elite 112 Becky Lynch. And of course, Seth Rollins is an Elite 112, which we will compare this figure to the Elite 112 Seth Rollins when we get to it, but I did want to showcase these up next to each other, the yellow and gold and everything, so there you go. If you want to see these two together, there you go. And then for Bray Wyatt's accessories, man, I mean, they are cooking with these accessories. Would you look at the amount that you get, Brad? A lantern and some hand. A lantern and some hand. So here's the lantern accessory. We've seen this before, I do believe. I don't think we're getting anything new here. The little light rosish gold going on right here is pretty nice. I like the paint apps there. I don't know if that's accurate. I feel like last time we got it was probably flat brown, but colors look good. You do have the lantern in there. It's appropriate. I think maybe one day, like, could we ever get a Bray Wyatt Ultimate or something where the damn lantern, you turn it on and it lights up like a NECA accessory or something would be crazy, but very cool accessory nonetheless. Even though you don't get a lot, at least it's a, it's something, you know, it's formidable, I guess. Outside of that, you're just getting mic holding hands. You do get the weapon wielding mic holding hands. Black peg with the brand, you know, this is the glove or the taped hand that Bray Wyatt wore. And then you do have the black wrist tape or hand tape on this side. And then he comes with a You Can't See Me style hands painted the same way or the, you know, the white hands out wide, whatever. You know, he's got the whole world in his hands, so he's got to be able to open them up there. You do get these style hands. But outside of that, I mean, that's pretty much the accessories, man. Not a whole lot going on, unfortunately, with Elite 112, Becky Lynch, or Bray Wyatt when it comes to accessories. So getting into Bray Wyatt, starting out the head sculpt, it is an Elite 54 repaint, but you are getting true effects here on this head sculpt compared to the Elite 54, obviously. But that's essentially what this figure is. Now, I no longer own the Elite 54 because I took it apart and kind of made like a different fix-ups, which I'll showcase in this video, which I think you guys will enjoy. You can see it and kind of showcase it. Maybe what we can kind of expect out of a potential future Ultimate Edition, but the head sculpt looks pretty good here. I never liked this torso because I always felt that he made him too skinny. Uh, you know, Bray Wyatt had a big chest, man. He was big and broad, especially after, you know, he went away for a while and then he you know, he, he put some work in the gym, lost some weight, gained some muscle. So you do have this old school torso, not the best torso of all time. And then he does have these really skinny arms. I really wish they would have upgraded his shoulders and his arms to the Ultimate Edition Fiend arms because they're beefier. It's the ones that I used on the Sandman figure, which have a beefier muscle here. But again, that's that kind of medium build that I'm talking about. If we're going to get into Ultimate Edition Bray Wyatt's and stuff, man, they got to make a bigger arm mold that's not completely shredded out of its mind. So that's something they got to do. But the tattoos look good and everything. His tattoos were always pretty impressive. 
impressive, I think. But on the back, you do have a nice belt buckle going on right there, or belt loop going around. And the belt does look good. This is, again, just a repaint of that uh, initial figure. But the khaki color or the brown color looks good with the patches and the tears and everything. He doesn't have pinless joints. Again, this is a straight-up re-release. I mean, it's obviously a greatest hits figure that got redone and put in the main Elite line here. But I like all these colors. I really love these boots. I think these boots look immaculate. I want to buy multiple copies of this figure to get more boots like this to fix up other figures. I think you could do some really creative and fun things there. But this Bray Wyatt, just like the Elite 54, is pretty poseable. He can kick forward all right. He's got a good double-jointed knee in there, which is nice. He can do a little bit of a split upper tight cut. Ab Crunch is pretty much there. I mean, he can, you know, it's not the most poseable guy of all time, but I remember, I'm pretty sure I used this guy in my Hell's Gate Elimination Chamber Elite Championship match. I think this is the exact figure. It's just obviously, it didn't have double-jointed arms, and it didn't have this look. It was, you know, the original Elite 54 figure, but it was damn fun to pose around. Like, it's it's very fun. When you have these, like, thicker legs, I don't know, something about thicker legs with the Mattel figures are very fun to pose around, but I like this figure a hell of a lot. I, you know, again, it is not really anything brand new besides maybe the true effects and the colors, but let's get into some Bray Wyatt figure comparisons so you can kind of see what we may get in the future. So for your Elite Bray Wyatt figure comparisons, here we have a few different iterations here. Now, I don't own any of the original Bray Wyatt's, like the Elite 28, the Elite 36, the best of pay-per-view. I never picked those figures up because I felt like they were so flat and not good that I never liked them. I never liked those figures. I think I owned the Elite 36 one time, maybe the Elite 28 before, but I always broke them down into parts. I just thought the formula was so trash on those, similar to an AJ Styles that I was completely put off by the figure. But we do have the Elite 85, which is one of the most underrated Mattels they've ever made. This right here is one of the most underrated figures. The only thing holding this figure back was a couple things. Like if it had a belt crotch or something like that, which is kind of what ruins this figure a little bit. But this is kind of a fix-up Elite Bray Wyatt. You can see... I used the Fiend torso right here, and it created this kind of really cool promo gear Bray Wyatt that has all these tattoos on it. But it didn't have a sculpted on belt loop, so it is just painted on. But all I did was paint the crotch black over a regular Elite Fiend like this, and then put Elite 54 legs in there. So you can see the comparison between the legs. They're the exact same legs except repainted and boots. Just kind of made my own makeshift Bray Wyatt. But it looks pretty good. I always like that figure right there. And this is a much better height. Look how stumpy they made the Fiend. Remember when I used to drag the Fiend figures and everybody was like, like, oh man, you're being too hard on the Fiend figures. It's because, look at him, man. Look how small and stumpy he looks. He was way too stumpy and small. Look how short he is compared to these other figures. Bray Wyatt was a pretty tall dude, man. He's 6'3". I wasn't over here looking like 5'11". But you can kind of see, if they were to make a new Bray Wyatt, I would hope they'd beef him up some and make him look better. And, you know, I hope they make a promo gear Bray Wyatt. I hope they make these different versions of Bray Wyatt. But I do want to get into some Ultimate Edition figure comparisons as well. And for your Ultimate Edition figure comparisons here with the Elite 112, you have my makeshift Bray Wyatt that I use on the pick fed anytime that Bray Wyatt appears, which is an Ultimate Edition fix up. I just, I took one of the Ultimate Edition Fiends, switched the legs with another Elite 54 Bray, and then just put the jacket arms and a regular head sculpt on there, and it kind of makes a promo gear regular Bray Wyatt, and then you have the other two Fiends. You have the first edition and the second edition. Again, made him too short and stumpy. Not the biggest deal ever, but it definitely kind of takes you out of the illusion of it and everything. I hope that they would upgrade the formula. You guys, this one's a good figure. It just needs bigger arms and a better chest and torso, I think, but for a you know, a regular Bray Wyatt. I think it does get the job done, especially the most part. And then for one more Bray Wyatt figure comparison, we do have the Wyatt Colt here. If he were to win the Elite Championship, you have Aleister Black, Eric Rowe, and Luke Harper here from the Wyatt Colt. And these all look pretty, but you know, badassery together. I like it. And then you have a shot of Bray Wyatt with the Elite Championship if that were ever to occur. You have him right here hoisting the trophy there. If he had just, you know, taken care of Kenny Omega and not let the Undertaker take him out, well, maybe he would be champion. Who knows? But I think that about does it for the Bray Wyatt Elite 112 and Becky Lynch Elite 112 figure review. I absolutely enjoy both of the figures in their own ways, but I will say I, I'm worried about the lack of accessories, man. I know that the Bray Wyatt, he only comes with a lantern and interchangeable hands. Becky Lynch only comes with the ladder and interchangeable hands, and it's to a point, like I stated, you know, are these figures getting to a point where, you know, the figures are so good that the accessories have to take a back seat, and it's kind of weird because you guys know as well as I do, you know, we've seen it with Seth Rollins. All he comes with is the championship interchangeable, interchangeable hands, and I know that's not necessarily the case, though, because we are getting so many cloth goods and things in the lines usually, but I don't know. I, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it's just these two figures, or maybe it's where they have to really go after one figure and increase that budget and get those accessories in certain figures, and then in certain figures, we're just going to have to take the back seat on accessories because the line's getting so good. I'm not entirely sure. Just a thought that I had, and I wanted to express it here in the review, see what you guys think, and all those different things. Obviously, Ultimate Editions are still coming with the accessories and everything, but the Elite line, maybe the Elite line taking a back seat, I'm not entirely sure. But overall, let's get into the figures. The Bray Wyatt 
figure, since we've been waiting on this figure for so long, it is going to be outdated because of that. It's not outdated in every way, but I mean, I think that now that Bray Wyatt's first figure is out, they're going to continue to make Bray Wyatt. They're going to continue to make very epic versions. I could see them doing a big three pack, maybe. I could see them possibly doing some sort of, you know, different characters of Bray Wyatt would be really cool. I mean, you could do like working out Firefly Funhouse. You could do an actual Firefly Funhouse, a way better version than that Ringside Exclusive, which was a god awful figure. You could have your Wyatt family version. Just so many different things they could do with him. I'm sure they're going to make Husky Harris. There's so many different, so many different versions of Bray Wyatt that they're going to make. Now that the first one is out, all the things are off. I think that, you know, we have that Ultimate Edition coming in Series 24. They're going to continue to make Bray Wyatt, and I think they're going to make him better. I think that they could use him, they could give him a better formula. Like this figure has skinny arms. I really wish they would have used the Ultimate Edition Fiend arms. That's the arms they should use. This is just an outdated formula. We've seen this formula for over 60, 70 series now, right? Elite 54 was when we first saw this formula. So that is why this figure is going to be a little bit outdated. However, it's still damn good. And I know a lot of people have been waiting on this figure. I love the colorations. Love the boots on this guy. It may be a Bray Wyatt that I pick up every time I see it because of the boots and how many cool things you can do with it. You saw in the comparison some of the things that I've experimented with with different Bray Wyatts to increase it and make it better. But I still like this Bray Wyatt and I'd still recommend it because we haven't had one in so long. I like this Bray Wyatt a lot. Just kind of like in accessories and a little bit outdated. Now on Becky Lynch's terms, I really like the figure. I just am not a big fan of the head sculpt. I just don't think Becky Lynch, just like Bret Hart, Bret Hart and Becky Lynch, those are the two bugaboos right there, man. They cannot get them right in the head sculpt department. Not that they've never come close, not that they haven't had some solid head sculpts, but it is just one of those likenesses that they can't nail. I think that Becky has had some good head sculpts, but this one doesn't really look like Becky Lynch to me, and I don't like the way the hair, how it has that like glob of orange on there. It's supposed to be like that ombre and coloration going one, but it doesn't really look realistic. It looks a bit odd, but it's not something you couldn't head swap. So the gear from the neck down is good, and it still has the basic boots that they're trying to implement and get out of the line. So hopefully that will happen sooner rather than later. We do know in approaching lines that those boots are going to see their way out. We're going to have a new elite feet and boot molds for the line going forward, especially for the women, and that is going to be hellacious, especially in Becky Lynch's case, because for her, she's had these same damn basic boots for so long, so getting those out, getting new elite feet in there where she can stand and articulate more is going to be such a breath of fresh air, and I can't wait to do so on surgery, so that'll be really fun, but Becky Lynch's figure is pretty damn good. I like the Becky Lynch as a, as a Becky Lynch fan, as a supporter of hers, I do like this figure. It's just not my favorite head sculpt, which that'll be up to you to judge. But I think overall, one of her best elites, I think, that they've ever done. Nonetheless, man, if you guys want to grab these, can do so over Ringside Collectibles. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%. Also, a huge shout-out to our Patreon members, man. Appreciate all those fellas over there. Thank you guys so very much, as always, for your continued support on the channel. You guys are absolute beasts. I've been running rampant and just been exhausted for the last month and a half with everything that I've been doing, and I appreciate all the support over there, man. You guys are absolutely incredible. But I think that's going to wrap up the video, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Leave me your thoughts down below. I'm getting the hell out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I will catch you guys in the next video. See you next time.